So the Suicide Squad Isekai has officially wrapped up with episode 10, and all I'm saying is the internet was wrong. I'm all for people having opinions, and, you know, there's definitely people who I think watched this show and just didn't vibe with it. But most of the criticisms that I've seen mostly discussed online come from a place of just wanting the show to not be the show. And the best way to describe it is it would be like if I walked in watching a basketball anime and got upset that they played basketball. Because almost all the criticisms I saw boiled down to stuff that came from a place of like either people just not naturally being into superhero stuff and then being Pikachu faced that this functions like a superhero story that it may not be the most complex thing ever maybe a lot of the story beats function in a predictable if not straightforward way but a majority of the comic books I've read do the exact same thing and I know that and I expect as much but then there's also criticisms that made no sense to me and it's funny because one of them just absolutely gets slapped away so when harley fought katana a couple episodes back you know people are like there's no this this is absolutely inexcusable there's no way harley quinn should keep up with katana this is bs one it's a it's its own story it can if she wanted to go up against goddamn anyone and beat them they can write it that way because it's its own universe it's its own thing but it is what it is but two we're in an isekai fantasy environment with magical shit being amplified just add that into the equation but the funniest part is three turns out it wasn't even katana it was joker that entire time i just think people wanted to be mad about this show and it is what it is i have the unpopular opinion online i could easily come up here and just say this is the most dog shit show of all time and probably I'd get more views because one, hate sells better than hype, and also two, most people just didn't vibe with this show. But I'm gonna be honest, this show was fire. They sequel bait you. There definitely is room for a season two, which this whole season I expected as much. But they haven't confirmed a season two from what I understand. But honestly, if for whatever reason they couldn't do more, like it didn't sell well enough, it wasn't popular enough, that they had to leave it off here, despite the story being open-ended, it actually kind of works as an open-ended. But at the same time, knowing Joker's been here this whole time, taking up the identity, trying to prevent this from happening, a Joker versus Harley matchup? Come on, we, we need a season two. That's all I'm saying. Now, of course, I do a full lot of reactions over on Patreon. If you want to see my full and good thought to any of these episodes, it's going to be over there exclusively. I know I didn't talk about it last week, but uh, I did watch it. Fantastic episode nine. But uh, production was fire the past couple episodes, especially ten, though. So, this is another thing that rubbed me the wrong way. There, there's there been, uh, it kind of stopped because a lot of the those people who were criticizing the production just stopped watching the show. But the first time we fought a dragon, like, there was so many nitpicks about, like, in-between stuff or saying, like, oh, that animation isn't good enough. Uh, I just, I disagreed with it then. But when you look at episode 10, it's not a single moment that's like, oh, that's the spectacle. The whole damn fight is one of the best produced things I've seen this entire year for anime. It just was jaw-droppingly gorgeous. The only issue I actually have with this show, and I guess it's kind of a two-parter, despite technically I think Peacemaker falling into the same place, I felt like he had more moments of like being less of a punching bag. I think Shark got underutilized, if we're being honest. I felt like he never had his true moment to shine. If anything, he was more of a punching bag, which is fine. But, you know, given what they're able to accomplish with all the other characters kind of like going outside the box of what you expect, I would have preferred to see a bit more with him. But in general, I appreciate that in fights, everyone did have their moments. So it's kind of crazy when Shark's biggest moment was allowing a sword to rip through his stomach in order to behead the bitch. But it is what it is. There was a magical girl transformation. Harley... Quinn just magically transformed, Clayface strikes a pose, MJ style, like, it was, I love the fact that they let them all suit up in this, like, isekai magical BS way. You know what this show is. It's half superhero, half isekai. Mix that shit together and you get a wild idea. It's the same idea with something like Batman Ninja, right? It's not gonna be for everyone, and in fact, that one really wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't necessarily my cup of tea, so I'm probably not gonna watch the season two of that that got announced. But the idea that this show just sounded so crazy and they rolled with that craziness, I love the idea that it didn't just function like you expect the characters to. I honestly think Clayface, from the beginning, one of the best parts of the show, ended as the best part of the show. One of the coolest depictions of his character, I think, across all media. A hundred percent. 
it's not what you expect but having him of all characters be this this character this weeb character for the viewer to just be like oh here's Here's the Sundere trope, here's the MacGuffin, it's just like, I loved that, and I loved how much fun they had. And despite seemingly there being so much they needed to resolve in one episode, it didn't feel rushed. They definitely could have, like, removed the open-endedness, and just had them all walk through that portal if they wanted to. But it does feel like they want to do more. But the battle didn't feel rushed, it escalated at the appropriate pace, and by the end of it, I just kind of felt happy. The whole time it felt to me like a 20 episode anime, and it still feels like that, especially based on the end of the episode. But I appreciate the fact that if it had to end here, I'm okay with open-ended things, and the idea of just thinking about how, like, you know, someday in the future, her and Joker would have to go up against each other is just so fascinating. And honestly, I, you know, despite not needing the Katana thing to be revealed that it was Joker all along, I actually do appreciate it. It makes me, you know, just more excited to see stuff if they do give me more, which I think they will. At the end of the day, I think uh, this show is just so unique. It was so fun and honestly was one of the more memorable isekais that I've seen this year. It didn't end up being the best isekai of the season like I thought it would after the first three episodes, but it lived up to what I needed the show to be. I wanted a unique, fun take on Suicide Squad. I didn't want to just see the same personalities and things I've seen before, and I wanted it to feel like an isekai, and they did exactly that. It was a fun twist, not what I was expecting, and honestly, the worst I could say is that I wish Shark had more of a role rather than being a punching bag and a uh, flotation device to get across water. That's really my biggest criticism. I liked it. I think the internet was wrong. I mean, people who just simply didn't like it are fine, but I think a lot of people, I mean, the big negativity online about this show comes from people who are just upset that it doesn't function like normal Suicide Squad and that it's a simple superhero story. Most su superhero stories are. Like, if this was a show that ran 100 episodes, you would expect, hopefully, there'd be like an endgame level plot line that would eventually come up, but for a 10 episode anime, 20 episode anime max, yeah, this functioned exactly as I needed it to. Anyway, that's all from me. Uh, if they do make a season two, probably won't get videos on it, but I'll definitely be watching it over on Patreon no matter what if they do make more. But I had a blast. Loved watching every episode. Let me know what you thought down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on Patreon, and they'll probably only be on Patreon if it does get more. And hey, while you're over there, I'll just give you a video shout out. So today we got Peaceful Hermit. MW... Chris of Wiper, Starcraft 48, Connor Reeves, Green Bean, Collagen, and we also have TMG Gaming 999. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and you all have a good one.